everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. Today's video is something that I've been wanting to film for ages, and the reason that I haven't posted it up until now is because I really wanted to take my time with it, and I wanted to get this video series right. I wanted this to be a three-part series, I wanted it to be really, really informative, like something that Shane Dawson would make, you know, like really well investigated, lots of interviews, things like that. But I made this video today because I just saw a tweet and it kind of pushed me over the edge and I wanted to wait and make this series later. But when I saw this tweet, I was like, no, I can't wait. I have to make this now. I have to. Because James Charles tweeted something today that made me so angry and I I just, I have to talk about it, I have to address this, because he is such an influential person and so many people will read his tweet and believe that, that, I mean, it just, it needs to get out there. I don't have that big an influence, but I mean, there are 180,000 of you that I could at least inform. So anyway, what I'm going to do is read you the origin of where this tweet stemmed from. So basically, someone posted something on Instagram. Someone then took a screenshot of it and put it on Twitter and then James Charles responded to that tweet. Someone called KJ Bennett Beauty wrote this on Instagram. Now this all stemmed from Marlene, who is the owner of Makeup Geek, posting a video the other day about her truth about the beauty community where she basically talked about influencers that she's worked with, charging astronomical prices and preferring money over honesty. So that's not what today's video is about. You can research that yourself. I'll put some links down below in case you're interested. But someone saw that video and wrote this Instagram caption. They said, I'd like to thank Marlene for having the courage to publish a YouTube video exposing what's going on behind the scenes in the cosmetic industry. I've attempted to shed light on the mobster-like behavior of top level beauty influencers and their management. And I've been accused of jealousy, called a liar and a hater. Fact. A brand I consulted with asked me to inquire about working with a top-level beauty influencer. The influencer's management offered me these options. $25,000 for a product mention in a multi-branded product review. $50 to $60,000 dedicated product review, price determined by the length of the video. $75 to $85,000 dedicated negative review of a competitor's product, price determined by the length of the video. A minimum 10% affiliate link or code to use on Instagram and YouTube. Yes, option three is legit. Payment to damage the competition's business. I told you it was a mob-like behavior. The demands and threats of influencers and their management have got to stop. The lack of disclosure by top-level influencers is fraud and it's time for the Federal Trade Commission to step in, start changing fines and shut this bullshit down. To the followers and subscribers who still refuse to believe their idols are thugs, Pull your head out of your favorite beauty guru's ass and see what's actually going on in this industry. So, that, let me just start. That's all true. That's all 100% true. That is not a lie. That's not made up. That's 100% true. And I know that's true because I have seen exactly all of this from two standpoints. I've seen it from an influencer point of view, as an influencer myself. But I also work in marketing in my full-time job. And I have actually been on the end of the marketing companies that work with the influencers that charge this sort of money. And I have seen exactly what he said, where companies are willing to pay people to put down other products to make theirs look better. That is 100% true. And I feel really sad for this person because this person has gone out on a limb and written this on Instagram and said that they've been accused of jealousy, being called a liar and a hater because they're trying to get this out there. And the reason that I'm making this video today is because I am standing by KJ Bennett Beauty. I don't even know who that is, never heard of them. But I read this and I was like, yeah, that, that's all true. That's 100% true. So someone on Twitter called Hey April took a screenshot of that Instagram post and tweeted, your favorite beauty influencer gets paid $75,000 for a negative review of a competitor brand. James Charles came along. Now, bless his dear soul. I love James Charles. He is one of the only beauty gurus that I actively watch every single video that he posts. I keep up with him on all of his social media. Anytime I buy from Morphe, I use his code. Like, I really support that kid. I think he's a great kid. And he tweeted this. He tweeted, 
I've never heard of this happening and believe what you want, but most of us do disclose sponsorships. I can't wait to talk about people like the man who posted this in a video very soon and then side eyes. Now, the reason I got so upset by James's tweet is because he said, I can't wait to talk about people like the man who posted this. Referencing the person that made that Instagram post calling out influencers for their rates. James says he's gonna make a video to talk about people like the man that posted this. Well, you know what, James? I'm one of those people too. I might not have posted it, but I'm like that man. I have worked in marketing and I have seen exactly what that man is saying, and it is true. Now, I am not calling James a liar. Like James said, I've never heard of this happening. I, I 100%, I'm sure he's, he's been true. He's been very honest. Like he's never heard of this happening. He's only, what is he, like 18 or something? I don't even know. Like, of course he's never heard of this happening. He's a young, he's a young kid. Like, what, is he just fresh out of school? Like, I'm 24 years old, I have a media degree. Straight out of university, I got a job at one of the biggest media corporations on the planet, and most of you guys would be using some form of asset belonging to this company on your computer, on your phone, on your television. Like, I've worked in the industry, and James hasn't. Like, James is saying, I've never heard of this happening. Of course you haven't, you're a good kid. He's a very honest, good kid. But for him to say that he's gonna, he's gonna make a video about the man that posted this and all this sort of thing, it's like he's calling that man a liar or he's gonna come out and say that man's jealous or he's a hater or whatever. James, you're not gonna see this, I know he's not gonna see this, but don't do that. Like, this guy has nothing to gain from saying that. I have nothing to gain from saying this. I'm trying to raise awareness in today's video to explain to people like the secret world of influencers. What happens behind the scenes with influencers that you guys never see? Now, James said in his tweet, most of us do disclose sponsorships. Now, this is what I wanna talk about in today's video. I'm gonna make this uh, a couple of videos. I have a lot to talk about, but in today's video, specifically because James said, most of us do disclose sponsorships. That's true, most of us do. There's a lot of really good influencers out there. They're good eggs. They are trying to be open, they're trying to be honest, they're trying to have full disclosure. There's a lot of them. But you guys would be so surprised by the amount of your favorite influencers that never, ever, ever disclose that their content is sponsored. What I want you guys to know about is the way influencers can make money. Now, if you're a really big influencer, let's say James Charles, for example, he has a management team. And if a brand wanted to work with James, they would probably contact his management. I'm not certain, but they would probably contact his management. The management would look at all the incoming requests and they'd go to James and they'd say, look, these companies wanna work with you. What's our schedule like? All this sort of thing. The management handles it. But for some of the smaller influencers, there's platforms that you can use that are self-managed where you can log onto the platform and companies have uploaded campaigns that they want influencers to make for them. So I've talked about this in my Amazon handbag video where I talked about the fact that I was on one of these websites looking at all the different brand deals that were going and I saw a really, really cute handbag and I was like, oh, that's adorable. And I did the campaign for them and I showed people the brief. I showed them what the brand wanted me to talk about. I was really, really open about it. Like the brand wanted me to talk about this bag, all this sort of thing. So. There's websites like that that we can log on to and there's hundreds if not thousands of brands that are posting things there saying we want an influencer to talk about our new skinny weight loss tea or we want an influencer to talk about our makeup mirror. We want an influencer to talk about our nail polish, like whatever. So the reason that I got so kind of like upset is because something has been dwelling in the back of my mind that I really wanted to talk about recently with a particular product that's been floating around that a lot of the top beauty gurus have been talking about. Now, I don't want a legal case on my hands, so unfortunately I cannot tell you guys what the product is, but I will give you a little bit of an idea. So on one of these websites, a lot of YouTubers won't talk about the websites. Like they, they have websites that they use to get sponsored, but the whole uh, influencer landscape is very, very competitive. And people don't like to tell other people where they can go to get paid. Uh, they just don't. Like, <laughs> they, they keep it very, very close. Like, they found an app that they make money off. They don't want to tell people what that app is. So, there's a couple of apps. There's one called Famebit, which is, I think it's owned by YouTube now. There's one called Tribe, which is owned by an Australian guy called Jules Lund. Uh, there's, there's heaps of them. Octoly, like, there's so many. But on one of these particular apps, quite recently, a campaign went up. 
and it said something along the lines of we're looking for influencers to test out our product now I'm just gonna pick a product out of thin air because I don't actually want to say what the actual product is because I don't want to get sued let's say it was a foundation brush so a brand posted a campaign on this influencer platform and said we're looking for influencers to talk about our foundation brush our budget is thirty thousand dollars now I don't know whether that brand meant $30,000 per influencer or if they had like a total campaign value of $30,000 that they were going to divide up between influencers, I'm not sure. But they said their budget was $30,000. So they said, we want people to talk about our makeup, our foundation brush, and we want people to compare it to this foundation brush, which was from another company. Now, the two products were exactly the same. I guess you could say one was almost like a dupe of the other one, except it was slightly different and way cheaper. So this one product, let's say the foundation brush, that's the hypothetical product, let's say it was $2. They wanted influencers to compare it to the expensive foundation brush, which was let's say $30. And they said, in their brief, they specifically said, we are willing to pay more if you are willing to say that our product is better than the other one or that you recommend our product over the other one, we're willing to pay more. So, I mean, it, it's everywhere, like everywhere. I see these campaigns all the time for eyeshadow palettes. I see them for clothes. I see them for, for a good one. A good example that I saw recently was a, a company just started up and they were trying to be like Fashion Nova and they wanted people to make videos about their clothes and they wanted the title of the video to say Fashion Nova haul, but then they wanted the video to be their products and they wanted people to say don't buy from Fashion Nova, buy from us, buy from this company instead. And they said anyone that puts Fashion Nova haul in the title will make more money. And if you say to people don't buy from Fashion Nova, but buy from us instead, we'll pay you more. So this, it happens all the time. I see it every time I log on to these platforms. Now a lot of the time the platforms are strict and they don't allow that sort of activity and they take the campaign down. They do. Like I've seen campaigns appear with those sort of things written, like we'll pay you more if you trash talk the other brand and the campaign disappears very quickly. But think about it this way, those sort of things happen outside of those platforms every day. Brands just reach out directly to the influencer and they say, hey, what are your rates for this thing? Like they'll, they'll get an email, the influencer will get an email from a brand I had an, <laughs> literally this morning, I got an email from a company wanting me to advertise something and they said to me, what are your rates for if you just show it in one of your PO box videos? Now never have I been paid to show anything in one of my PO box videos ever and I will not accept that as a sponsorship. I'll show free things, like people send me something for free, I'll show that. But if I'm getting paid, like if I was going to do that, if I was really desperate for cash and I was like, oh yeah, sure, send something to my PO box and you can pay me to unbox it. If I did that, I wouldn't let that sway my opinion. I'm not going to do that. But anyway, a company emailed me and they said, how much would you charge us to show a product in your PO box haul versus how much would you charge us to show it on its own versus how much would you charge us to show the product, say that you paid for it with your own money and that it is not sponsored. Let that sink in. The, the company literally said to me, can you give us a rate for how much you're willing to charge to sell your soul? Like, this happens every day. So, James has come out and said, you know, most of us do disclose our sponsorships. Now, the reason that I got really, really upset is because like I was saying, I used that analogy of the uh, foundation brush, right? And they were saying, we want you to talk about our foundation brush and verse it to a different foundation brush and say that ours is better. Right, so this is where it gets kind of weird. I was browsing through, I browse these websites all the time in the hopes that I will find something that I actually like. Now, I've only done a couple of sponsorships on my YouTube channel, like actual sponsorships. I've had a lot of stuff for free, but I've only done a couple of paid things. And one of them was Dolls Kill, and I found Dolls Kill because of one of these websites. And I love Dolls Kill, absolutely love it. So when I was scrolling through the website and Dolls Kill had a campaign and they were like, we're looking to send clothes to YouTubers to make videos about our clothes, I was like over the moon. So what you do, you apply for the campaign and you say, you give them like a little idea of what you would do. So I sent them a message, I was like, hey, oh my God, oh my God, I love Dolls Kill so much. Like I would just like to make a haul video. Maybe I could show like 10 items like I'll probably pick pastel things, you know, and they came back and they were like, yeah, sick, sure. So they, we did that collab. So I saw 
last week or the week before or whenever it was, I, I was browsing through one of these websites, seeing if there were any campaigns that interested me, and I saw a product. And I thought, oh yeah, that's interesting. And I clicked on it, it said, we're a startup company. And they had their budget, their budget was huge. Anyway, they were like, we're a startup company, we're looking to send this product to influencers to use our product and do a challenge using our product and using our competitor's product. And, you know, for people to say that our product's better for a fraction of the price. Anyway, I didn't know what the product was, it didn't interest me. Like, I clicked on the campaign, I was like, what's this? Read it, I was like, never heard of them, closed it. That week on YouTube, I saw six of six huge, huge beauty influencers talking about this product out of nowhere. All of them at the same time. Not a single one said that it was sponsored. So there is a chance, there's a chance that that company just got all the PR boxes of all the big beauty gurus and sent it out. Like that's, I'm not, I'm not saying that they paid those people. But I just thought it was really funny that I went on this platform and I saw this campaign for this product that was just launching, never heard of it before. They had this huge budget. They were literally saying, this is our budget. It was massive. And they were like, we're looking for people to talk about our thing and, and use it in a challenge style video. And then all of a sudden, these videos popped up on YouTube all within the same week of all these people using exactly the same product, using it in comparison with a similar product. And me, I was like, oh my God, that's that, that's that thing. Like that's, the, and I went back on the platform just to double check. And sure enough, there was, there was the thing. There was the ad, like the campaign saying, we're looking for influencers, blah, blah, blah. It was the same product. So me looking at it, I'm thinking to myself, it is more than likely that those other influencers have seen that and they've, they've gone for the campaign and they've put their price on it. Cause what you do, you price your own material. Like you decide based on your viewers and all this sort of thing, how much you're going to charge. And then the brand looks at how much you're charging. They can come back and say, sorry, we can't afford it. Can you cut the price? Things like that. So I reckon that those influencers jumped on that campaign, but they didn't disclose it. Like, don't you guys think it's weird that all in the same week when the sponsorship opportunity appeared on this website, all of a sudden, all of the, all these six people started talking about that thing in the exact same style of video that the campaign asked for. Like, I know what's going on here. Like your, your regular, your viewers, your millions of viewers have no idea because your millions of viewers aren't on that influencer platform, but I am, I've seen that campaign. Now there, there is always the chance that maybe, maybe the company just sent it out for free to all of those people and all of those people unboxed it in their regular kind of PO box. They're just pulling open their parcels. They're like, oh, that's an interesting thing. I've never heard of that. Maybe I'll make a video. It was obviously the obvious choice to compare it to a similar product. That's obvious. They probably saw it. They're like, oh, this thing already exists, but it's really cheap. I'll compare it. Maybe six of them all at the same time had the independent thought that they were all going to do that and they all released the video in the same week. But there's no way of proving that. And the difficulty here comes into the fact that you're crossing a lot of international laws here. So if you are being paid by a company in another country to post something that you're being paid to post, the laws, it's a little bit messy. As opposed to if an Australian company contacted an Australian and said, we want to pay you to post about this, and the Australian posted about it and didn't disclose it, it's really easy to nab them. Like, we, we have, you know, a board here that c people can report people to and they investigate. It's all within Australia. That's easy. But what happens when the company is based in another country and they're paying someone in, in your country? So let's say the Australian advertising guidelines for sponsorships and all that sort of thing would be different to what they are in America and they would be different to the UK and all this sort of thing and Holland, the Netherlands, like anywhere, it's different everywhere that you go. So I know some influencers, <laughs> I have been to a couple of influencer events where people talk about ways that they can get around things like this. They literally sit around in little groups and they're like, oh, well, I wait until I go on holidays to so-and-so country because they don't have strict laws there. And I upload the video when I'm in that country. So then that way it doesn't fall under the advertising guidelines that my country has. I'm not kidding you. Like people are crazy because companies will pay way, way, way more for it to seem like an honest opinion. Like, I... so now I'm going to talk about, a little, just touch on this topic lightly. I'm going to make a video, a full in-depth video about this, but I'm going to talk about Tribe. Now, 
This is going to sound like one gigantic sponsorship, but I can promise you it's not. I kind of hate this company as an influencer. As a brand, I have worked with this company from a brand point of view. So Tribe, it's owned by Jules Lund. It's an app and you basically open it. There's literally just campaigns, just as far as the eye can see, campaigns. So what I like to do, I just scroll through to see if there's any companies that I recognize that I already buy from. And if there are, then I will create content for them. So a really, really brief rundown of how it works. The brand, let's say McDonald's, they're launching a new burger. So they might contact their advertising agency and come up with some sort of creative campaign. Like how can we get viewers engaged and excited about our burger? So then the advertising agency will come up with some sort of cool, fun thing. The advertising agency will then go on Tribe. Now some smaller companies just skip the advertising agency, they just do this themselves, but They'll come up, regardless of whether they have an agency or it's just them coming up with it, they can go on Tribe and they can say, here's the name of the campaign, uh, McDonald's Spicy Burger. Then it can say, Australian Influencers, whatever, we want you to visit a McDonald's and buy one of these spicy burgers and take a picture of it and then write a caption saying that it's the best burger you've had in your entire life and you recommend that other people go buy it. And then it'll say, you have to include hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, and hashtag McDonald's in your caption. So then as the influencer, you could be scrolling through Tribe and you can be like, oh look, Maccas, Maccas has an ad, like I love Maccas. So then you read it and you're like, okay, they want people to eat the spicy burger and take a picture. So you jump in your car, you drive to McDonald's, you order the spicy burger, you pay for it, you take a picture of it, you upload it onto Tribe and you write a caption and you think to yourself, Okay, I'm gonna say, uh, hey guys, had a really fun Wednesday today. Went to McDonald's and ate this new burger. Wow, it was so good. It's a bit spicy, but I love spice. Hashtag ad. So then you upload the picture and the caption to Tribe. So then the advertising agency or the individual brand logs onto Tribe and they can see a hundred different influencers have submitted, a have submitted pictures. So they look through them and they go, okay, well, this person only has 5,000 followers no, we don't. We only want to work with big influencers. So they might go through and look at the all the pages, and it'll tell you this person has fifty thousand followers. This one has five hundred thousand followers, and it breaks down their account and their analytics and all that sort of thing. And then the brand can say approve, and if they say approve, then the influencer gets a notification on their app, and it says congratulations, McDonald's has approved your post. Please post it within the next forty eight hours. And then the second that you post it. Tribe sends money to your bank account. So that's how it works. So it's great because it's really, really, really monitored. The people on Tribe are so strict. So for example, the, the influencers on Tribe, if you even think about buying followers, they will boot you. Like they'll just instantly ban you because if you've got 4,000 followers and then one day you're like, mm, I'm, I, I really want more followers and then you buy a thousand followers, Tribe goes, uh, no one gains a thousand followers in a day, sorry, and then they boot you off the platform and you can't access it anymore and they ban you. Now, this happened to me when my very, very first Wish video went viral. The first Wish, uh, no, yeah, my first Wish video, it went from having, I had like 5,000 subscribers when I posted that video and within a couple of weeks, I ended up with, I think like 30,000 subscribers and my Instagram blew up and Tribe kicked me off because they thought it was suspicious. So I had to send them an email and I had to send them screenshots of my YouTube analytics and all this sort of thing. And then they looked at it and they were like, oh right, that makes sense. So they reinstated my account. But they're really good for protecting brands because they make sure that brands only have real genuine influencers with real followers because they audit your followers as well. So literally every, I think it's like every three hours, they have some sort of bot that runs through people's followers and checks to make sure that they are fake accounts or anything like that. They're really, really strict. So Tribe is one of those platforms where it's trustworthy if you're a brand and you're trying to find influencers to work with. So in my actual job, I've, I've used Tribe with companies to work on ad campaigns and I've seen the sort of astronomical prices that some influencers charge. We're talking like $50,000 for an Instagram post. Like, so the way that you, the pricing system works, I'll just put this up here. So this is Tribe's price guide. So they basically say, if you're an influencer with this many followers, that's what you can charge. That's a recommendation. Not everyone follows that. <laughs> so anyway, that's just an idea for influencers. That's just to show you guys kind of like how influencers can make money. 
But the issue kind of comes into the fact where an influencer could just be browsing through Tribe and they're like, man, I'm broke. I want, I want to go on a holiday. I want to earn $5,000. And they could just apply to every single campaign. They could maybe, let's say I use that example of McDonald's, maybe they're a vegan. I mean, I don't think a vegan would do this, but let's say they're a vegan, hypothetically. They don't eat meat, and but they're desperate for money. And they're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna submit to that McDonald's campaign. And then they go to Macca's and they buy their burger and they tell their followers, wow, this burger is delicious. They ordered the burger, they took a photo, they threw the burger in the bin, they didn't even eat it. So that's where it's kind of, it's muddy because anyone can submit content for any campaign. But if your audience knows you well enough, they can see through it from a mile away. So for me on my Instagram account, Pretty Pastel Please, I've done, I think two or maybe three sponsored posts at most. And the sponsored posts that I did were for brands that I was already using. So Swarovski, for example, I've been wearing Swarovski jewelry for like 10 years, I reckon. And Swarovski had a campaign on Tribe and they were like, we want people to talk about the fact that if you buy three pieces of jewelry, you get one free or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, I love Swarovski. So I applied for the campaign. I was like, I would love to be part of this. They sent me the jewelry. Like, that's great because for me, it's a brand that I really like. But let's say there's a brand up there. Now, I've seen this a lot and it makes my blood boil. And I've reported a few brands because it made me so angry. There was one and I've ranted about this before. It was a skinny tea company. And they said, we want influencers to post pictures, influencers with good bodies to post pictures of themselves holding our skinny tea and saying that they're skinny because of our tea. Like these are people that have never once drunk that tea in their life. They have a good body. Now let's say you're someone with an Instagram account with a hundred thousand followers and you see that campaign. You're like, Hmm, huh, I have a good body. This is a good opportunity for me to make a thousand dollars. So you contact them, you apply for the campaign, you say, yeah, I'd like to talk about your skinny tea. They send you the tea, you go, ah, you know, really happy with my ads right now. Thank you so much, skinnytea.com, or whatever you're gonna say. And then you try the people, the company is like, yes, approve, ka-ching, you get a thousand dollars. Your subscribers go, oh my God, she has such a nice body. Oh wow, she drinks that skinny tea. Oh, okay, I'll buy the skinny tea. That person never drank the skinny tea. Like. This is what, if you're going to support someone, I don't, I think there's nothing wrong with sponsorships. I think sponsorships are fantastic because it means that people like me, you know, if you're a content creator, you can get paid, you can continue to do what you love. But also at the same time, there's people out there that are absolutely going to abuse that. So I think for you guys, my kind of moral of today's story is to just stay woke. I hate that term, stay woke. If you support, you know, if you really support someone and you value their opinions, try to invest in that person a little bit more. Try to get to know them. Try to look across their account, see what sort of things that they talk about. Let's say it's a skinny tea thing, for example, and you know this influencer really well, and they've been talking about the fact that they've been on a no carb diet for six months. Let's say they've talked about it on their Instagram and all that sort of thing. And suddenly a skinny tea ad appears on their account and they're saying, I'm skinny because of this tea. You, as a viewer, who has been following this person for a while, you would automatically recognize that that is not true. Or let's say someone is talking about an eyebrow product and in all of their videos they say, I don't know how to use an eyebrow pencil, I only know how to use eyebrow gel. And then one day they're holding an eyebrow pencil in a sponsored post, this is my favorite eyebrow pencil, but you've been watching them for a couple of months and you know they don't like eyebrow pencils, you know they only like gel. That's warning signs. So just try to stay aware of the fact that not everyone is honest. Try and flesh out who the honest people are. It's really obvious to tell who the honest people are. I won't buy a product unless Tati gives it the, thumb, the thumbs up because I love Tati. I know money cannot buy Tati Westbrook. It can't. People like Jeffree Star, he doesn't do sponsorships. He doesn't do affiliate codes. That man has all the money in the world. Like if he talks about a product being good, I believe him. If Jeffrey says that thing is good, I'm like, okay, Jeffrey, that thing is good. James Charles, he's a good kid. I trust what he says too. So you really kind of have to flesh it out, decide who am I going to believe? Who am I going to trust? If you see someone posting something that doesn't seem quite right and it's an ad, take it with a grain of salt. Like just, Archie, just do yourself a favor and try to educate yourself. I mean, Remember that, that Bennett, KJ Bennett or whoever it was that made that Instagram post that said, 
people get paid $25,000 for a product mention in a multi-branded product review. That's true, that's true. I've seen that from both an influencer point of view, not myself, but I have a lot of friends that are influencers that make that sort of money. All they have to do is they pull out their products, they say, these are my favorites for summer. One of those products that might even be there for $25,000. The second thing they said was fifty dollars to $60,000 for a dedicated product review. That's, that's cheap for some influencers. I mean, like, I've seen influencers with two, 200,000 Instagram followers that make fifty dollars to $60,000 for one Instagram photo. I've seen that. I've seen that because I have worked in marketing and I have literally seen companies pay that. I'm not joking. Uh, the thing about seventy-five dollars to $85,000 for a dedicated negative review of a competitor's product, I have seen that too. I can't name names because I really don't want to get sued. But exactly what I said about that, like I said, foundation brush was my example where they said we want you to use our foundation brush and the other foundation brush, ours is cheaper. We want you to tell people don't buy the other one, buy this one, it's much better. Those sort of reviews get so much more money than just a regular review. So anyway, that's that. Got that off my chest. I just, I saw James Charles's tweet and I was like, James, please, like, you're a young guy, and just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not happening. <laughs> anyway, so something that I really want to do is I want to keep making videos about this. I want to show you guys a little bit more in depth about those websites, for example, and what sort of campaigns are available on them, what sort of money that people make from those sort of uh, posts on Instagram. So I have a lot of friends that make really good money on Instagram just by doing lots of sponsorships. Uh, I have a lot of friends that hate sponsorships. I have worked with a lot of brands on campaigns like that and I have brands that I could interview that could spill some serious tea on influencers. They probably couldn't say anyone's names because they'd get in trouble, but they could definitely explain a bit more about the sort of rates that they have been quoted from influencers. The, the thing at the end of the day, imagine how difficult it must be to police this. Like, think about it this way. Think of how many videos go up on YouTube and how many pictures go up on Instagram every single day. How does someone police that? How can any board or commission or anything police whether or not an influencer is being paid to talk about something? Sometimes I have seen where brands will pay the influencer for the very first sponsorship. So let's say the very first time that the product appears on their channel, they will pay them a huge amount of money. But behind the scenes, the brand has said to the influencer, okay, now if you feature it in this video, then you have to use that and only that product exclusively, let's say eyebrows, let's say it's a company with an eyebrow pencil and they're saying, okay, uh, we'll pay you $50,000 for the eyebrow pencil video, but that $50,000, actually the terms and conditions behind the scenes is that you have to use that eyebrow pencil for five months, for example, five months. But to sort of get around the fact that they don't want people to know that that influencer is only using that eyebrow product for those five months because they're being paid, they will say the $50,000 is specifically reserved for that one video. It's like, oh yeah, this $50,000, that's for one video. Oh, and uh, I just like the product so much that I'm going to keep using it for five months. How do you police that? Like, you don't police that. <laughs> As a viewer, you just have to kind of be aware of the fact that these things could be happening. As an influencer, you have to be honest, because honesty is all you have in this industry. If you lose your integrity and you lose your honesty, your word means nothing. So you really have to hope that people are being honest and they are being open. Like, I love to tell you guys about my sponsorships and the free stuff that I get. I love to be like, oh, hey, like I got this for free because I emailed the brand and I said to them, I like your product. I would love to review it. Would you mind like sending it to me? And a lot of people think that I beg brands, but at the end of the day, would you guys rather that I accept, now I have 50,000 followers on Instagram, I have 180,000 subscribers on YouTube. I get brands coming to me saying they will give me $5,000 to talk about their product. Now I have never ever accepted anything like that. The only time that I've accepted paid things is because I actually really like the product. I've had a few brands contact me that I didn't know and I said to them, oh yeah, if you send me the product and if I like it, I'm happy to make the video and I've sent the products away. Like even though I literally had a brand email me, they were in New York, they emailed me, they said they were launching something new. They wanted me to do a five minute segment in one of my videos and they would pay me $5,000. Now I looked into the product 
I was like, man, I could really use that money, but I'm not gonna sell my integrity. So I said no, because I looked at the product, I was like, this, this no. Like I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe in the brand. I, it seemed to like, I just, they, they literally, they wanted me to talk about the product before I even received it. They were like, okay, in the first video, we want you to say that you, you ordered this. They didn't want me to say I bought it. But they said that I had to word it like, okay, in one of your videos say you're really excited because you ordered this thing and put the link in your description. And then when it arrives, we want you to talk about it then for five minutes and we'll give you $5,000. No. I mean, any company that's going to ask me to review a thing, to endorse a thing that I literally haven't even picked up in my hands or touched, no, I'm not going to do it. So just remember, there are people out there that will, that, but... I guess at the end of the day, if the product is a good product and they're endorsing something good, even if they're getting paid a lot of money to do it and maybe they're saying nice things about the product because they're getting paid, if the product is good, there's not too much harm that can come of it. I mean, like, if someone is being paid $100,000 by a car company to say they love that car and it's a beautiful car, like, okay, I mean, there's only, like, it's kind of different to pretending that something is good purely for money versus being paid and you're saying so you're only talking about the thing because you're being paid but at least the thing is good like this is where the whole influencer world gets it's very messy and there's a lot of stories that i can share with you guys a lot of people that i can interview from brands marketing people marketing insiders influencers everyone that i would love to continue this series and interview people to show you guys a real wide range of opinions on this topic so yeah guys that's it i mean I, all of this was sparked because I saw James Charles saying that he has never seen, he's never heard of a company paying someone to talk badly about another product and James said, oh, I've never heard of that happening. James might not have heard of that happening, but it does happen. Some people care more about money than they care about integrity, which is exactly what Marlene was talking about, where she was saying influencers were quoting $60,000 for one mention of Makeup Geek, and she's saying we simply can't afford it. The influencer should be wanting to promote something to their to their audience that their audience is going to like. Even if they're not gonna get paid $60,000, even if they're gonna get paid $5,000, they should care more about their audience and the fact that what they're showing their audience, it's a great product. And even though the company isn't gonna pay them $60,000 to talk about it, they should care about their audience more than the money. So that's what Marlene was talking about and that's what I believe in. So for people to charge huge astronomical amounts of money for sponsored posts purely because they're like, I'm only gonna talk about your thing if you're gonna pay me huge amounts of money. They don't care about the product, they just care about the money. And the problem is there's so many people out there making such good money right now from the beauty community and from other industries on YouTube. They're making such a killing, they are making bank. And they don't want anyone to know about what I'm saying or what that guy on Instagram was saying. They don't want people to know that. Because the more woke you guys are to the tricks and shenanigans, the less you guys are going to buy and the less money they're going to make. So we need more people to be open about this and share their experiences online. If you're a micro-influencer, you know who you are, one of my followers on Instagram who I follow back. You have 13,000 followers. You put on your Instagram story recently that a brand was being really, really sketchy and we were messaging on Instagram about it. I'm not going to name you, but people like you, you're a micro-influencer you need to get the word out there too. Like, because the big influencers that are doing sketchy things are gonna do everything they can to squash people and to make it seem like they're lying. But I feel like, at least for me, I have an advantage over some other influencers because I see it from two perspectives. I see it from an influencer point of view. I'm friends with influencers. I am an influencer. I work with brands. I hear all of this stuff, but I see it from a marketing point of view. Like, having a media degree, having the industry experience that I have, having worked on huge campaigns dishing out. I worked on a campaign that paid an influencer $200,000 for a three minute segment. And the influencer had never even heard of the brand before. Like I have seen it from two points of view. So I like to think that you guys can trust me as a, not an authority, but at least as someone that is educated on this. So if you liked this video, you found it interesting and you would like to hear more about the it's kind of like the secret world of influencers. I can do a couple of different videos. I can show you guys all different elements of this. There's a whole bunch of stuff I didn't even touch on today. All of this stuff that I touched on just stemmed from James Charles' tweet. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you're interested in seeing more. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, 
that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry this was a bit of a lecture. I'm sorry that I'm not my usual joyful self, but I saw that thing on Twitter and I just got so upset and I just had to make this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys next time. Mwah!